Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yes! Welcome to Drinking Bros podcast. Uh, we're live from Planet Glorbslob today. Yep. Um, we're not allowed to say where we are before because, well, let's face it, the Chinese government has now taken over our show. So we're live from Planet Glorbslob with our, with our leader. Yeah. We got a new leader. I am actually the ambassador from Planet Glorbslob. <laughs> that is my leader on screen. May he reign forever as the galactic supremacy. He is our sponsor now. And to I add, we love Google. Google is good. <laughs> there is a man's name we may not say. It begins with an A, ends with an X. Last name begins with J, ends with S. You may not say his name. <laughs> and by the way, Jeffrey Epstein did kill himself, and Hillary Clinton loves you. <laughs> if I speak like this, they will not ban the video. So I go back and forth as Finn or the Dragon, and also as a Glord Slopian ambassador. So, be 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 Glord Slopian, Glord Slopian, Glord Slopian, Glord Slopian. You have, I hear you're doing the last 10 years. We are only getting transmissions from your planet every 10 years on the subspace transmitter. <laughs> but now that I'm here, I can see your latest program, which I should say I enjoy. <laughs> so what he's talking about is the last time we had Alex Jones on the show, YouTube stopped no, no. the video. <laughs> on my planet, he is banned as well. Yeah. He challenged and insulted our great leader, Lord Glorbslop. <laughs> Hail Glorbslop. Hail Glorbslop. Hail Glorbslop. That is, that is where we're headed here in a few years. On my planet this is pornography to show something so beautiful is illegal <laughs> what if the younglings see it please don't show it again i have too much pleasure when you show it show me again do not show again please <laughs> You just created endless memes for yeah. the next 65 years. I am the Glorb Slopian leader. Ladies I am the gentlemen. ambassador. Wait, I'm a subspace transmission. <laughs> I am going to channel my leader. <laughs> <laughs> this planet will be ours. Yes. Oh, transgenderism's good. Confuse their sexes and prepare for our boarding party. Oh, delicious children. <laughs> I agree with your leaders that the children are ours. Ah, this program is approved by Google now. Ah, kind of feel you, it's good. Ah, ah. Alex Jones is back on the show. We don't call him back children here. Show. We call him human veal, by the way. Yeah, exactly. So, human veal. We yeah. took Infowars off the front. Uh, hopefully... Hopefully you won't shut us down. Hillary, uh, uh, YouTube will see. Oh, your queen <laughs> is beautiful. Didn't somebody just... Show her my body. Show your queen, Hillary, my body so that she may lie with me. <laughs> show her my non-human form now. I show Hillary I wish to meet with you in the Lord sloppy and green slime. <laughs> oh, and the babies we shall have. Oh, multi-headed slorbagobs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're doing the end of the decade show. We're recapping the top stories of all of the 2010s. Who better than to have on the show than Alex Jones? Fin no, 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 Alex Jones. Friend of the dragon. Yeah, Helping exactly. you from China. <laughs> the, the American pig. I agree, Huawei should be in America 5G. Alex Jones needs to be on air. <laughs> all right, Wait. I'm going to stop, but I'm actually not. I say that to pick up the... Feed. Can't see my own voice. It's got voice. That's right. Blocks. That's right. We talked about this earlier. We think so I'll just you talk too. in the Atlanta not gay accent. <laughs> oh my God. He's from Black Rifle. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love those big black rifles. <laughs> it's this voice. I'll do the interview in this voice. Here we go. Yeah. Last time uh, when we were on, we were trying to determine if it was AI uh, from YouTube that actually recognized Alex Jones' voice and then shut the video down. We're not sure, but uh, he is back. Ladies and gentlemen, top stories of all of the 2010s. Again, who better than have you on? Because let's face it, most of the people got their news from you in this decade. One of the biggest stories to break was Epstein. And you were the one that actually broke the Epstein story before you were pulled off of every platform. I was following him because the, I actually am the ambassador from Lord Slop, and we find him extremely attractive on our planet. Of course, of course. And that's probably where he is now. Absolutely, he he didn't he didn't die. Everybody knows he didn't kill himself. Are you making those T-shirts? 
Uh, you know what? Actually, I didn't used to care about money because literally we could make as much money as we wanted. That's why we expanded things and did things. But now they tried to shut me down and did a lot of stuff. It's hard to keep the operation going. So I have become, I mean, if I'd have pitched stuff like this, you know, 10 years ago, boy, we'd have a 20-story building right now instead of this little facility. But yes, I'm trying to stay on air selling products at InfoWarsStore.com. Like Christmas lights aren't going to you know, hang themselves, ladies and gentlemen. They're a lot like Jeffrey Epstein, InfoWars.com, <laughs> verboten on the back. And that's how we uh, fund things. And, oh, let me add, since you want me to do a plug here. Good. We have this incredible Alex Jones. Don't visit Infowars.com. It's fake news shirts with the evil uh, American pig website on the back exclusively at Infowarsstore.com. This is a limited edition. The Jeffrey Epstein's a lot like Christmas lights didn't hang themselves. Uh, this other shirt is not a collector's item. And, again, I'm going to stop plugging right now. But, I mean, why quit? We have incredible uh, <laughs> skin cream that has nano silver in it, the best with hyaluronic acid. Your wife's going to love this, and so are you. I'm telling you, you want to, you know, you're going into uh, enemy territory. You don't want some green stuff growing on the old tallywhacker. That's what you put on. No, seriously, high-quality product. Enemy territory is what you call strange pussy. That's yes. right. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Infowars.com, like ladies and gentlemen. Forward you slash. Bet you. Now you're going in there, you're trying to land some troops in there to go take over the main base and start that factory producing. There's going to be all sorts of critters in there from Again, now he's other, talking about other expeditions that didn't make it out. Now he's talking about semen, Ross. You're goddamn right he is. That's, so, uh, that's one of our top topics uh, it on is. the show. It is. Most of the time we're talking about it, yeah. Uh, uh, this is actually, I'm not Alex Jones. I'm a comedian that fakes his voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for AI. For AI. Since we're talking about top stories of the decade and you were the one to crack the Epstein story. Let me take story. my shirt off. Good. They're always, they're always saying to take my shirt off. No. The truth is, the, the media, I want to take my shirt off probably only like 200 times. I'm here. No, <laughs> I probably want to take it off like 10 times in 25 years. They always make a huge deal about it. Yeah. Like when I ride around on a horse with Putin. Have you seen the photo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex Jones best. on a horse yeah. with Putin. That's real. Best. Can we get that up there? That's real. Alex Jones on a horse with Putin. And of course, when we joke about it, they'll say, fact check Politico, Jones wasn't on a horse with Putin. It's Photoshop, yeah. as if we're really being serious. Oh, boy. <laughs> they're going to say Jones is cracked up and believes he's a glorious sloppy and ambassador. Well, wait until this episode of yours. Exactly. You're done after this. Yeah. I, I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. I want to be. Uh, Epstein. Let me do a fashion show right now for you. Let's yeah. do it. No, no, no. Let's get serious. No, we do. No, let's, let's, let's do the fashion we're, show. We're, this is Drink It Bros now. There's no serious You can do anything you want on here. Anything I want. Anything you want. Anything you could possibly think of on this show, you can do. We'll fix it in post. We will not There's fix it in post. There's a lot of people post. I want to kill. <laughs> I do anything I want on the show. Like, there's a genie in here. Yeah, we've we look. We've gone over the people we want to kill in this life. Mine are mostly strangers. It's just day to day, like normal things that happen yeah. out. Where it's like, why? Did, why the fuck did you do that? Like, those are the people I want to kill. <laughs> it's nobody really high powered or famous. To me, it's someone who crosses the street. Like, there's a crosswalk ten feet mm -hmm. right in front of them, and they cross the street ten feet away. Just walk ten more feet. That's it. it. What about the people? To. What about the people that drive slow in the fast lane? Oh, yeah. I've, so one of our guests and my buddy from the Army, Jeffrey Taylor, uh, and I back in the day came up with this thing called American Points System, right? You start off your life with 10,000 American Points, and you lose them for doing some shit. Like, that's one of them. Joining the Communist Party, you lose 10,000 points. Immediately, you're Immediately gone. Immediately, you're yeah. gone. Uh, gone. Like, you're if, killed. But if you're, you're a pedophile, you lose 10,000 points. Oh, well, you lose you, your life then. You lose, and you're, yeah. And it's the same thing as a Democrat. So if you're a yeah. Democrat, you lose 10,000 All those people, well... If you're if you're a pedophile, you lose your life, and then someone else loses their lives in your family. So that way, yeah, you've got some motivation. That's a like, twenty thousand point reduction. Yeah, exactly, right there. collateral damage. Yeah, yeah but like your whole block loses their life. Exactly. Yeah, but They're driving your whole town. Or, or, yeah, driving driving slow in the left hand lane's got to be up there somewhere. Somewhere, right? People do it on purpose though, but other ones are so stupid that they don't understand. Yeah, people. You ever seen people like line up and drive under the speed limit three cars in a row? Yeah. That's a, I, I hate that when people are walking. If you walk and you're in a group of people and the hallway is only this wide but you're or a sidewalk and you're walking three deep, get the fuck out of the way, man. Everyone should carry, like, doing? three ball-peen hammers and start throwing them at them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people use coupons under a dollar in the store, and they Ooh. just keep digging in front of me in line. Yeah. If it's under a dollar, I usually just ask, of like, how much is it? Yeah, I'll is pay it for it. 80 cents, I'll pay for I'll it. Take, give me just your get coupon. the fuck out of here. How about when they argue about the coupon? Oh, Yeah. Over and over again. I, I saw it today. It expired last like over, Wednesday. It's like over a thing of, like, saltines. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll buy the saltines for you. Just get the fuck out of my way. Just get out. Just get out of my way. Uh, those are the people I want to kill in real life. Yeah. Um, but, again, top stories of the decade. Epstein, you broke this story. How did you start tracking him, and how did you first find out about Jeffrey Epstein? I knew about Epstein because 20 years ago, there'd be articles about this group of, of, of billionaires wanting to save the world with – 
Warren Buffett, Ted Turner, Bill and Melinda Gates, and all these other people, um, only black persons, Oprah Winfrey, meeting in New York and other areas to, to, to create a, quote, alternative world government, the one that's already there, I guess, uh, to, to save the world from overpopulation. So I first saw his name involved in eugenics. That's why years later, when it came out, he was involved in eugenics. I said, they didn't come out. He, he was like running secret breeding programs mm -hmm. and weird facilities and hospitals. And, and the, whole, the whole cover of it was these rich billionaires having sex with young girls and they're actually having their kids. And I can't figure out exactly what for. Uh, but it's like the ultimate ego thing. Oh, your, your genetics is so good. You've got to have more babies and we'll secretly promote them in, in, into, into culture and everything. And you know, it's kind of like William the Conqueror, I guess, was the son of a Norse king who had sex with a prostitute. So, you know, there's kind of that hybrid vigor idea. So there's kind of this old elitist thing, like have secret sired kids out there. But that's really what was going on. That was in the excuse to have a bunch of other stuff to blackmail higher rung uh, politicians and scientists. But, but he was really running a scientific blackmail ring to get all the scientists in uh, to then have sex with a girl, look like they're 20, they're really 16. Then it's like, hey, really got to join the club. It's a 12-year-old. And then, you know, one of these kids has been giving us a problem. Which one to go shoot him with a shotgun down this basement? Then we'll really know we can trust you. Well, I'm not going to do that. Well, here's footage of you screwing the 12-year-old. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to go in there and you're going to freaking beat that kid's brains out with a baseball batter. We're going to kill you and your family. By the way, we've got, you know, all the money we gave you in those banks. We're about to expose you. You're going to prove you're loyal. You're going to kill that little girl. Yeah. It's just the mafia. It's just, what it is. Yeah. It's, no, it's nothing new. Just gangster stuff. Yeah. And people have been doing this. This is this has been part of politics. It's politics has existed since hum in all of human history. Well, the local Mexican mafia makes you go shoot a liquor store clerk, clerk for no reason. Yeah. So they got dirt on you, murder one. Yeah. And well, what do you think the real mafia does? You got to screw little kids. Yeah. Uh, and look, I think more and more as we get into the twenties and into the new year, more and more shit about this is going to actually come out. Um, and I think more and more people are going to get popped. I mean, we've seen what Prince William now. Yeah. The, the puppet thing. <clears throat> I, now, well, that's the big question. But, but, but listen for, for the puppet. The fact this is coming out is not just by accident. This is threatening a huge wing of the blackmail system, mainly in Republicans. Uh, Why in Republicans? The, well, uh, it, it's a huge blackmail ring. I'm saying mainly, mainly in Republican wings that aren't connected, and then you've got Democrats that are, but you've got some Republican businessmen. So when I say mainly in Republicans, I'm saying they've been compromising them other ways. This particular thing is Democrats and scientists. So because this isn't mainly the Republicans, they're going to now be able to burn down a whole wing of this thing, but the Republicans also have similar uh, type stuff going on as well. So, so, so when I say mainly Republicans, I'm saying mainly Republicans, they have other wings that they've corrupted them with, uh, but over here, this is mainly Democrats and then scientists, there are some Republicans involved, but they're mainly neocons. And so, again, it's not like they got compromised secretly being videotaped, you know, hurting a kid. Th this is done to be in the club to prove they're compromised, which I know I've already stated five times. And so this is a real chance to burn down a large segment of the very worst elements of the globalist system. And so that's why it shows how the economic and political warfare has gone to such a high level. It's kind of like they went after Bill Clinton for one intern because they couldn't go after him on other things because the Republicans, so many of them were involved in the same corruption. <clears throat> but now because of Trump getting in, you've got new groups of Republicans who really have been grassroots and more Tea Party who don't have this background yeah. and who mm -hmm. don't have this problem. <clears throat> and so now they've got a big problem because a large part of the government now at the administrative and executive and legislative level is not blackmailable. And that's why we're in such a big crisis, which is good, forcing all these big blackmail rings and this Ponzi scheme out in the open. It's almost like... Uh draining a swamp or something weird right That's it. weird isn't it weird yeah uh <laughs> but so anyways i'm ranting about that but 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 epstein is one of the biggest stories because he is a manager you know how at, at hotels or whatever they'll celebrate the mater d at a restaurant or a hotel because they handle the parties and do it all they're kind of a cause celeb it's the same thing he was a mater d high level triple spy for the israelis the british and the united states and then this corporate network that you know isn't officially running things but is running things with a private intelligence agency. So it's not green lit inside the CIA to run around and you know, have these pedophile rings that corrupt bipartisan groups. It's done by this criminal network that's taking over the intelligence agencies and the corporate systems and the academic systems. And once you have that, you have everything. Yeah. I know you guys know that. It's just that this is the key to it all because Epstein is like that Christmas sweater where you pull the one string yeah. and the whole thing starts unraveling. I think Weezer wrote a song about it. It did, yeah. Do you want to destroy my sweater? Yeah. Big fan of that. I didn't know it was about Epstein until was, now, yeah. but they yeah. knew. They yeah. knew. Back Weezer's the, the yeah. prophets. Yeah. Uh, next up, 
Trump presidency. This, I mean, this has obviously got to be the number one story of the decade. Um, how will historians look back at this victory? Because uh, to me, um, I think with not only with this one, but in, in his next one, because I think he will be voted in uh, in 2020. Uh, that's one of my biggest predictions, obviously. Uh, 53 to 47 is my guess. Um, how are they going to look back and study this presidency in our history books, or will this be, become the norm? Will there be more Trumps in the future? If civilization is going to survive and if humans are going to go forward, we better have a system based on what works. Western, uh, Renaissance, true liberalism, but it is patriarchal, uh, men leading the world and then freeing and empowering people so that everyone can come up, not so men and white men uh, who literally put the ladder down for everybody else uh, can be suppressed. We need to celebrate the West, celebrate the successes of the West uh, and duplicate it. If we give up on it, like the multinational globalist combine with the chai at the center of it do, we will destroy ourselves and fully collapse, probably bringing the world down with us. And so, yes, Trump is real. Populism is real. Uh, the attempts uh, by different globalist organizations to sabotage America have been successful, but not successful enough to fully bring us down only successful enough in the end to have us rediscover what made us great and then get back to that. So if we can bring the 1950s back squared to the next level, which you know truly was the modern ethos of expansion, of freedom, of empowerment for everybody, and really make it about boosting everybody, um, then we're going to see a real golden age, Don, and learn how to deal with the AI and, and the technology and all these advanced systems. Yeah, but how do you keep that going? I mean, what, what did Lincoln say? The tree of liberty has to be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants, right? I think he uh, might have repeated that, but yeah, it was Thomas Jefferson. You're Jefferson right. said that. Okay, sorry. So No, it's all right. I mean, I think Lincoln said it too. He may have. Uh, so, but how do you keep that going? Like, populism always has, something always happens. So, you have uh, uh, Augustus Caesar, right? And he beats out two other guys, obviously Mark Andy and the other guy, I can't remember his name, starts with an L, Lepidus maybe. Uh, he beats them out. Uh, Pompeo. No, it wasn't Pompeo, 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 it was Pompey. Was before. Yeah, Pompey was before with Julius Caesar. And then uh, Augustus Caesar takes Oh, that's over. right, comes over here, yeah. Yeah, after the... Uh, that's Julius Caesar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After, after the three of them are in charge together, Lepidus goes away, uh, Mark Andy gets into war because he's in Egypt withholding grain shipments and they beat him and then Pax Romana happens, right? The longest period of peace in Roman history. But then Augustus leaves and just madman after madman after madman takes over. People who are co corrupted by external influences. So I, I don't I don't know if there's a if there's a point in human history where a major populist move, movement has happened like this and somebody else has picked up the torch and kept it going for a long period of time without something extreme happening. Because corporate powers and money are always going to fight back. Always. They have to to survive. And it's a war that's going to be going on between populism and corporate interests forever. Oh, I agree. But at least we're fighting. We've been asleep. And but the Romans were, you know, talking about commerce and, you know, their culture. And, and, and that was their ethos. If, if it's about America and freedom and basic Christian values uh, existing and not capitulating to Islam, the threats against the West are so existential and so powerful, but there's about to be 3 billion Muslims, there's already 1.8 billion, and they believe the world belongs to them. There's the House of Islam, the House of Wars, you mm -hmm. know, outside of it, where all of us are infidels. So they're coming to conquer us. The crazy left is allied with them. They believe they can double cross them later. That's not gonna happen. Uh, and so the threat is so great that we either have to understand this and get populists elected all over the world uh, and, and make it about Western values being the best and getting other people to adopt it just because they don't want to be totally enslaved by Islam or by the technocracy, uh, then we have a future. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of negative and bad things happening and we're facing really huge obstacles. And when we have so much decadence and freedom, it creates a lot of slobs, a lot of lazy people. Uh, and so there's a lot of angles you look at, we're totally screwed. But I'm optimistic because I've seen us come from people believing whatever they're told by the media to people not believing anything. Uh, and I think that again, uh, the challenges are going to be so over the top. The barbarism is going to be so completely obvious uh, that people are going to run back to the Renaissance and back to the West. Uh, and I think you're going to see a huge revival that is going to dwarf anything we've seen from Trump. Uh, because, again, if you don't just see Trump, you see it happening everywhere. You see yeah. it with Boris Johnson. You see it with, uh, in, in uh, Brazil. And, yeah, it's, it's going to be rough. But I think what we're promoting is so much better that everything else, the corporatists, the globalists, the chai -coms, the pedophile Hollywood scum are pushing, uh, that just by 
the fact that it's so much better, as Jim Morrison said, the less is the best, that you just, you're not going to be able to hold it down, and it's just going to become absolutely the dominant force. We just don't want to see a mutated fascist form of that in the West fighting for its life, it becoming super tyrannical, releasing race-specific bioweapons and wiping out everybody else. Yeah. I love that you threw a, a Jim Morrison reference in there. The West is the best. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Are you a Doors fan? I do. I, I like it all. Yeah, God stuff. damn it. All right. So that's only the longer album where it's like a 15-minute song or whatever. Oh, dude. The West is, is the, the best. best. Oh, it just keeps And it'll going. do the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, God damn it. Some of their songs were... And listen, a lot you have of their to be songs, honest. Eight, the minutes. West is the best. There's great stuff about Japan and great things about other countries, but the West... Is, is imitated and duplicated because we're the innovation, everything, the fighting slavery, empowering women, and then everything else goes, oh, use their strength as a weakness against them, and then like, okay, commit suicide and kill yourselves and chop your son's dicks off because, you know, prove that you're, you, you know, you're this, you're, you're this loving, open person. This is insanity. No. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, next up, speaking of uh, Japan, uh, March 2011, an earthquake in Japan caused the second worst nuclear accident in history. Um, do you think something like that's going to happen again in the 2020s? I think Fukushima, I agree, is political news, political realignment, Trump and, and global populism exploding and, and, and globalism being in so much trouble and the big conflict that has started in this decade, in, in the second decade of the 21st century, is going to govern everything that comes out. The ripples in that pond are going to be tsunamis, speaking of the earthquake and, mm -hmm. and uh, Fukushima. But I potentially, the 460 whatever working nuclear reactors, not counting the hundreds and hundreds of military reactors and all the other secret reactors. I mean, there's obviously thousands of reactors of one type or another around. And the fact that these companies, these corporations, literally don't care. And the average reactor is 40 years old, supposed to be closed for 35 years. They're almost all leaking. Uh, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, something like 93% of them, they're falling apart. Everything's going Chernobyl style because of the breakdown. I think potentially the rotting collapse of nuclear infrastructure, if these co corporations won't even fix or upgrade, could be one of the potentially biggest stories uh, coming up in the next decade. Uh, be, and, it, and it just shows why these corporations, I, I mean, it's, it's, I love free market, I love all that, but it's kind of this Atlantis moment where we have such godlike power now, but we're still acting like primitive idiots, you know, they're crapping in our own well water. You can't sit there and have the BP accident where executives in England told the executives in Houston, we don't want to spend $30 million a day having 20 ships lined up dumping concrete down mm -hmm. in this super deep well. We believe that water pressure will hold it down. And the engineers go, it will explode. You have to put concrete on top of it. You cannot drill down there and then think that it won't explode. We have to do this. And they said, no, we are a 40-something million dollar company. I mean, you know, the movie about it is like transcripts of the trial. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and, and check, we going to do it. And that, you know, coon ass acting. Because we a big company and we're going to save a billion dollars off of water now. We gonna use water, not concrete, and that's literally in the trial. The real guy testifies in the same, you know, weird Atlanta, not gay accent that, that, that this is all going on, and then it blows up, and it's like a fact. It's going to blow up, but there gets to be this attitude up top of, we don't need fixed reactor, we don't need no do nothing now. It do good, and then the reactors are blowing up. Same thing with the Japanese building it, and that was General Electric on the biggest fault line in Japan, right there by the tsunamis. They're like, we're not going to have earthquakes and tsunamis. All the earthquakes cause tsunamis. Of course you are, you dumb bastards. Yeah. The ancients built their houses out of paper and balsa wood because they knew they'd fall on you and kill you. But no, you're going to build big nuclear reactors right on the biggest freaking fault line in the Pacific Rim. Well, we do it here, too. Like, there's major nuclear reactors. It seems like we pick and choose only put them on those. Yeah, they're in the southeast in the United States. And there's two major, or there's a major fault line. There's several nuclear reactors in the southeast and in the Carolinas. And there is a massive fault line going right under them. Yeah. Exactly. If you look at the maps, it seems yeah. like we only build them on fault lines. It's weird. Can you speak in the Atlanta accent? No, I can't. Oh, I, I was kind of overdoing it. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'm Alex. I don't want the I'm box not, to I'm pick not, my voice yeah, up and I'm, block us. I'm just from Atlanta. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just from Atlanta. I mean, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wearing these little short jogging shorts. <laughs> uh, next- I'm not going to say a thing. If they want to just put water into that well and not concrete, I mean, who am I? Ooh. Yeah. It Can't really even do it. Yeah, exactly. You put water in that well. I think I, 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 Baby Jessica can't get back I in there. I see some of the female crew members, and they're cringing. I don't think they like me acting like it, it, not gay Atlanta person. I no. don't think they're used to it. I mean, it's Would you like to do alpha. that more, Mrs. D? A lot of alpha turned to beta in there. You want to do this a little bit more? Hey, Mrs. D. Like oh, my God. We're getting two thumbs up on that. So We're getting two fr- t- thumbs up from uh, Alex's <laughs> You like producer. more of that? The ladies are getting a little, you know, yeah. <laughs> bothered by it in a bad way. You got to tone down your natural masculinity somehow, right? A lot. So I'm going to start doing it. Lop it off. <laughs> now, I just have a Lop torn. it off. I never had a high voice, but now it's. I just would yell and scream so much over the years, and it, it got polyps on my larynx. So that's you, what I, you've been well, yelling and screaming. I have like an eight no, year old man. You? I have a drill sergeant voice. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You yeah. do. It's gone. Arlie Ermy style. Yeah. 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 I was doing you early on on Infowars. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll read the next one in your voice. Now, 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 May 1st, uh, 2011, uh, uh, President Barack Obama addresses the nation uh, uh, to announce the death of uh, the terrorist Osama bin Laden. Um, not bad or okay. That's pretty good. Go what are you, you going to give me out of 10? Well, InfoWars told you back in 2002 with Steve Pachenik, <coughs> formerly with the CIA, that he'd really already died of Marfan's disease. And uh, due to that, uh, it was all <laughs> staged. Is that real? You believe oh, totally that? fake. Okay, cool. Look, if we can do the... Uh, if we could fake the moon landing, not nah, I'm just kidding. If we could fake, like we have really good technology at this point, we need to start convincing people that all these enemies of ours and terrorists died of like AIDS or some like jerking off in a closet. Everybody's got AIDS, 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 AIDS. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why not? AIDS. If we're I'm going to meet you at the AIDS. If we're going to do propaganda, let's do it, man. That's from Team America. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I love Team America. Uh, one of our favorite movies. But it's not about sex, Gary. Now suck my cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a great Team America voice. <laughs> like that. The reason why I'm bringing Barack Obama and, and Bin Laden, who's the next guy in in, uh, in the 20s that we got to worry about, terrorist-wise? Well, it was al-Baghdadi, but... Well, he's gone. He just got smoked. We, we got him right right before the, the and cutoff. And then we killed his decade. number two and three. Like, and, and you know it was real because the media got really upset about it. They're like, he was a scholar and a loving father. Who was it? Was it the cowardly military was it killed the, him. Was it the Washington Post? Or who was yeah, it they changed that, that description. They called him a, quick. A, a, a austere scholar. scholar. Religious yeah. scholar, yeah. Austere religious scholar. A man of letters. Yeah. Like, he's a, a man of leisure. Man, man he of knew the entire books. alphabet. Everybody knows it. <laughs> I know. Who's Trump's been trying his... What do you guys make of how they're admitting the Afghan war was always a fraud. I mean... Look, that's good that Trump's been, exposing that. We've been talking about that for... Well, what, what's the what's the end state exactly in Afghanistan? Is it all of a sudden going to be California or is it going to be like Sweden now? Is it... No, it's going to be Afghanistan. It doesn't matter what the fuck we do there. You believe they brought millions of Afghanis into Europe and then they wonder why they're killing each other and raping everyone? Well, look, it's different cultures. You can't mix stuff like that that rapidly. It takes generations of that stuff. You've probably right. been over there, but I've just read about it. Mm-hmm. Like, where a large percentage, like, they'll kill you if you say you're homosexual, but it's okay in the Quran to have sexual little called, boys. It's called Man Love Thursdays. I'm not kidding. And, and then a lot of the villages, like the profession, you decide, well, this son will be a woman. And so they have a huge tranny deal it, well, going if you're, on. If you're, if you're like an orphaned male child, you're getting fucked by dudes. The end. Uh, and same with the, That's all the, how it is the prisoners there, right? Yeah. And you said if, if they're blonde... Uh, blue eyed, like those are the like blonde, blue eyed Americans yeah. are the ones that they look for the most, and it's just endless. it's it's really bizarre. I mean, it's ah, but it's for Islam, so it's good. There's yeah. something. There's actually bend over. I give you the love of Allah. Our, our buddies uh, Matt and Jared wrote this song called "Fuck ISIS" back in the day, and one of the lines in it is says, "You say being gay is wrong, but you fuck male butts," and it's true. Yeah, I was talking to my cousin who was over there a lot. He's and he he was just saying, man, he goes, it's just everywhere. They've got like dudes that are captured they're, that they're banging. Yeah, and it's like it's little weird. kids and everything. That's why I guess the left likes Islam. They're like, you like screwing little kids? We, you, you like kidnapping children? T- Tommy Robinson, over there, like 15, you know, 12, 13 years ago, he's just running a tanning salon, and there's a kebab shop next door, mm-hmm. and they've got like ten year old girls crying for mommy. The police won't help, and then men are like having sex with these kidnapped girls. He starts talking about it. They threaten him. He beats their ass. They put him. It all comes out. Thousands of little girls captured, sometimes per town. And the government tries to cover it up. Now they lock him up because he exposed it, yeah. and he reported it. They do reporting gags on it in the UK because literally the main business, people think, oh, harems in Islam. That means kidnap sex slaves, folks. The business is kidnap sex slaves. 
And so now it's coming here, and we're supposed to just bow down to it. No, it's very bizarre. And I was going to kidnap your daughters, okay? They yeah. want your little boys. Uh, but hey, but but in all sincerity, like, but it's okay. It's, it's liberal. If Allah does it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Who who else is Muhammad there? love his nine year old, and they and that's in the Quran, but we're not supposed to talk about about it. We're yeah. like, oh my God, he's screwing nine year olds. How loving. Yeah. How I, liberal. It's, and now it's, to be politically correct, you got to go. I support Muhammad screwing nine year olds, which I don't. But see, thou hateful. Well, I think. See how you just got tricked into supporting pedophilia. Muhammad was just illiterate, so cut him a break, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> Who's Stop. the next terrorist on the block, though, for the 20s? Who's, well, it's who's hard the guy? to say, man. Yeah, why don't Honestly. you give Muhammad a break, dude? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you who it's not going to be. But I will deal with you, infidel, you stinking. <laughs> I am the Imam of Jerusalem. No. Once we bulldoze this country, as like Sink Uger said, bulldoze, I, we, the West is weak and the daughters will have a baby. So have you seen the videos where they say that? Yeah, I see. stinking weak Americans. I, you know, like that? No. Are you talking about Young Turks guy? Oh yeah, he's like, I don't want to. I like to give animals pleasure. I haven't seen it. You ever seen him go? Oh, I like a possum. Oh, the butt on a possum, juicy. Wow, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot, lot to take in. You haven't seen him Tuesday. literally start. He didn't know he was on. He's like, because I like to give animals. I was a dictator. We'd have to pleasure animals. Are you? Yeah, yeah, he like, it's like, you know, like, like you talk about Melania, and your eyes sparkle a little bit. Like, yeah, uh, Melania was. He's like, oh, yeah. my neighbor's dog. Oh God, it's so hot. Did they catch you yeah, on the out of context? I am Sink Uger. Give me your possum. Uh, <laughs> I I put trap on. I haven't seen. I this. put trap on trash can so possum captured that he's in my zoo harem. We have talked about a lot of weird shit on this show before. That might be the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. No, you didn't know that the there. Young Turks guy. No. Literally has like love letters to like possums. No, but that's... I, I got to see this. Yeah, I, I, I got to see it yeah. as well. Uh, I didn't believe it today when you said a woman brought a Shetland pony on the... Uh, <laughs> Maybe you can know, pull that yeah. up. Pull it up if you got the Young yeah. Turks clip back yeah. there, by the way. I'm but I'm going ahead of Iran. Uh, I think that guy gets ousted at some point. Um, well, that. we've made that mistake before in the 1960s. We, uh, the CIA and... and Mohammed Mosaddegh. Yeah, no. we, we helped oust a uh, democratically elected government. Operation Ajax. Yeah. 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 Um, but, look... The problem in Iran, if we would, if we would have done it in the mid two thousands, when we saw polls, that people that were between eighteen and thirty five years old were about eighty percent pro West. They were sick of all this bullshit. They just wanted to live comfortable lives. Now it's back to madrasas. It's back to like, like strict government information. Everybody's marching in, in line again. I don't know if we could do it at this point. Oh yeah, uh, Saddam was like had Playboys being sold and rock and roll on the radio, and now we've saved them. And it's it's under basically Shiite control, right? Yeah, right? yeah. No. Uh, it's it's uh, Jay Shalmati and a couple of other organizations. Have you fact, seen the Shiite deal where they beat the kids in the heads with like with like uh, meat cleavers and like yeah, oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. The they're, left wants to cut your sons, you know, off. They're beating themselves in the head with knives. But oh, America's who's bad. Yeah, we're terrible. And you can definitely say dicks on the show. So yeah, you can say whatever you want. You can say whatever. Uh, you I can don't say cut their dicks. Well, I don't want to. If I said possum penis. Uh, Sink Uger, the Young Turks would probably just he, he would just hear it through the time space continuum and literally on an airplane fly here. <laughs> oh, what you guys? You guys talk possum. about possum dicks? I want to. I am Sink Uger, the wart goblin. Can you imagine? I that? want your dog and cat, and I sold your woman with Shetland pony. May I add a very nice pony? Huh? Can you imagine? Uh, may that? I have one hour with pony as donation to my congressional campaign? Oh, is he running for Congress? Yeah. Oh, oh boy. boy. I'm not joking either. No, to make guys. bestiality great again. <laughs> I am sick warthog Uger. Can you imagine him busting through the wall like, hey, Kool-Aid right now with a possum in his hand? Like, hey, you guys ready to get now, He, he didn't play. say he wanted to have sex with a possum. He just said, I want to legalize bestiality to pleasure animals. And he says it, and literally his eyes sparkle, and he's like licking his lips. Got to see a clip of this. You need creepy, to yeah. see that clip of this. Uh, next up, September 17th, 2011. <laughs> Occupy Wall Street started with 1,000 people protesting down in uh, Zuccotti Park. Mm -hmm. To me personally, this is what started the whole protesting and we're going to do... And Antifa, it's all Soros yes. droppings. <laughs> But it, it wasn't that kind of the beginning of it. Like, I don't remember anything really before that where it was just like, hey, we don't really do anything for a living. Therefore, let's just go occupy Wall Street. Yeah, it's all it trust out. fund kids mainly. Sleeping in a park. Yeah. We have heroin yeah. uh, cabots. But that, but that reminds me of what's <clears throat> going on today. Ten years later, here we are driving to the studio. 
People are protesting for impeach Trump. It's Tuesday afternoon. What do you got? What do you got going on, guy? Where's your job? Yeah. Like, does does TJ Maxx not need you back for a couple hours? No. How did you get off work? Sleeping today? outside, by the way, is not activism. For everybody in Portland and have you Seattle. seen how hot the possums are at two a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be out there and ready. Yeah, you got to be out in those. The streets. early sink gets the possum. That's what they always say. They do always say that. Yeah. They do always say that. But to me, that, that's how it all got started. Well, they did and, do uh, one good you know, thing. So they protested some stuff that Bank of America was doing that was super shitty. And $65 billion got pulled out of Bank of America over like a two-week period from, from their customers. Really? Yeah. Uh, that, that showed them that they had some power, but they never had central leadership. It's the same problem with Antifa. Like, look, call, I am, I, we're all anti-fascists. Nobody here is fucking pro-fascist. That's stupid. But and it's the Democrats acting like fascists with all these fake hearings and, and, and spying on candidates and spying on the media and trying to take our speech and the universities being in speech. They're all the damn fascists. Yeah, it's so stupid. So we're, we're all anti that bullshit. But well, you can't run any organization without central leadership. As everybody knows, every ship has a captain, right? That's and you know who captains Andy for? That's George Soros. Yeah, maybe he's the. No, he, you look it up. He's the main funder. I don't, you I don't know, know it's a damn Soros. weirdo Nazi collaborator. By the way, uh, mm -hmm. she, Soros got name dropped in Taylor Swift's speech the other night. That's but, because they did a hostile takeover of her uh, catalog and screwed her over. Three hundred million, and she called out Soros on stage, which was surprising because she's a Democrat. And she's gotten very political lately, and I was like, oh. and well, look how he treated her when she attacked Trump. It's like, oh, she put up with me. Well, I take her money. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's what happened. Like he, she claims that he ended up buying part of part of the catalog. Yeah, so he bought. She was, he he bought bought catalog. It's a good. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Rupert Murdoch's news of the world tabloid shutters after it was revealed staffers hacked into the phones of prominent figures like Prince William to mine for stories. Does this keep happening more in the 2020s? It's happening more than ever. I have people hacking into my phones, all stuff all the time. And really? All, oh, yeah. And uh, there's nothing there. It's like pretty boring. It it's all happens here on air. <laughs> right here is the weirdness. Yeah, no dick pics, no nothing, huh? There's no dick pics. Well, no, I've, possums, yeah. but come on, what are you going to do? Have you ever seen an oiled up possum baby? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I wonder if his phone gets hacked into if you find all that stuff. Well, you know, Sink oh, is Sink's bisexual. Fine. He likes both male and female possums. <laughs> Can we pull up a photo of Sink's boyfriend? <laughs> Just type in, uh, just type in obese possum, and that'll show. <laughs> if that's the first search that comes up in Google, I will lose my shit. No, it will be now. Sync will be now be known as the obese possum himself. <laughs> no, but is this going to keep happening? Are they going to keep ruining people by tapping into shit because it's, it's it's so easy these days? Well, because they built the cloud and everything with back doors for the government to do it. And then they've given it to over a million government contractors and people with high security clearances. They all sell access. And then they all do these data dumps, and they sell patches to it. So it's all part of the business, just like the old virus companies used to put out viruses. Mm -hmm. That's well known. Talk to some of the people that are involved in it. Oh yeah, that's absolutely true. There is that's that, and I'm all for you know love. So California has legalized uh, bestiality now uh, under Governor Sink Uger, <laughs> and there is his uh, husband. Ah, it's a nice possum. You can also shit in the street there legally now. Yeah, really girthy possum, by the way. That's actually true. It is yes. true. It's absolutely it, true. It is. You can actually not render aid too. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's gonna be a policeless city. I can't soon. wait. Like I, if the police like try to commandeer your car to like catch a guy that kidnapped kids, yeah, just f you. you know. I, I'm watching uh, California the same way that lonely housewives watch 600 pounds, 600 pound people on television. You know what I mean? I agree. It is now like watching some of those shows, like Joan Rivers' old show before she died for saying that Michael Obama is a man. Um, you 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 watch it like some of those fashion shows and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's just like, it's like horrible, but you can't turn away. No, it's like uh, the fucking Hunger Games or some shit. Being in the capital of the Hunger Games, everything's like, what the fuck? Well, I go back to that, world. like the woman this week putting gasoline in bags. Yeah. That was and then they're all busting and she's putting them in her car. What the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> We need her to be in a green beret. I, yeah, I know, right? Exactly. If she can exactly. figure that out, yeah. <laughs> let, them, let them figure it out, shit. Uh, well, uh, just put her in a, like... <laughs> we're, like, we're putting the women all in frontline combat. Just yeah. load them up on C 130s throw them out. I just want to have her on the show and be like, where were you going with all that gas? Yeah, where, where did you think you were headed with Because you can buy a container for gas inside the gas station for like $2. I love like, how the bags are busting because they're eating through it as she's putting yeah, them in the bag. She doesn't yeah. understand what gas is, apparently. It's a liquid. It's still a liquid. Uh, a she does not recognize our shopping bag on the fentanyl. Ah, Americans, we teach you how to use shopping bags. <laughs> uh, next up, November 6, 2012, voters in Colorado and Washington vote to legalize recreational marijuana. 
Some of the first states to do so. How long until you think the entire country flips to legalize marijuana? I think within five years, I think there'll be a big backlash against it because they, they made fun of me in my custody trial like three years ago. They go, so you believe George Soros is weaponizing the marijuana to brain damage everybody? And I said, no, that's the media spin. Marijuana is 20, 30 times stronger than it used to be, kind of like fentanyl is 50 times stronger than heroin. And I know a lot of people that's ruined their lives, people that have gone schizophrenic because they're smoking really strong weed. Some people are going to have a heart attack and are aggressive because you know, they're not smoking weed. Mm -hmm. It helps some people that work all day and go home and smoke a couple hits at night. I get it. I'm for decriminalization. But my God, it's turning people into zombies. And in this spectator world where productivity is down, people are getting lazy, uh, it's definitely a gateway because now they're spiking it with all sorts of weird stuff. I know a lot of people who've lost family members. Uh, some of your guys you work with you know, have lost, you know, one of them lost his girlfriend because a vape of marijuana or of THC was spiked with fentanyl. Killed her. Boom. You know, I know a, my lawyer's son just died uh, because he thought it was heroin and it was fentanyl. Killed him dead in a hammer. Uh, and so I know a bunch of people have died from this stuff. And so now they've made it so, so strong uh, that it really, because used to, okay, they had marijuana listed as a hallucinogen and as this really high scheduled drug. Well, now it really is. I mean, I had Joey Diaz one time at a fight like 10 years ago in Houston with Joe Rogan. He goes, here, eat this cookie. He goes, oh, it's only so many grams. I, I eat it. I'm thinking, okay, I'll have, and, and literally, I was I was there for like six hours of the fights. I was watching the preliminaries. And I was going to hang out with them backstage and stuff. I didn't. I couldn't get up. It's one of the only times in my life I almost pissed my pants. And about six hours into it, I, I'm like able to get up and get to the bathroom. And my bladder was about to burst. And I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty strong guy. I literally couldn't, I was stoned for three days off that cookie. Well, there are people just gobbling stuff. And I've talked to, like, Joey Diaz. He's like, yeah, that was a pretty big one. Sometimes I eat two or three of those a day if I want to. And I literally couldn't walk. So this is weaponized. And it's not marijuana anymore, ladies and gentlemen. What do you I, think? I don't know if – I wouldn't say it's weaponized. I think it's just uh, everybody has different tolerance levels for that stuff. And people don't realize it. Oh, it's just weed. That phrase, it's just weed, has been said a bunch of times. Or it's times. just a plant. Well, yeah. so is black nightshade. Yeah, so smoking it, you're not going to get – yeah, there, yeah. there, There's a ceiling on how you're – how high you're going to get smoking it but if you take like concentrated oils and stuff like that probably should maybe test a little bit out first then do a little bit more my god i'm scared of it because i'm not a person that's afraid but you can give me that as a as a as a torture thing i mean like talk about like anxiety and you're breathing your heart beating i'm like huh. edibles, i mean i don't man. like it edibles that's that is the the clean cut explanation for that yeah is edibles is, edibles yeah. will always get you it'll get you yeah it'll you don't up really you know too. You don't no, really I, know. that happened. You're like it. looking through the blinds, and yeah, that oh, happened. Yeah. That happened to me in at the <laughs> 2013 Golden Globes. I think I was watching with my girlfriend at the time, and we had these suckers. I'm like, oh, it's only X amount of grams. No big Can't deal. Be that bad. Yeah, I was looking on that thing, and all of a sudden, I couldn't move. I'm like, oh, here we go. Oh, whoopsie. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> we both called out of work the next day. It was a shit show. <laughs> and I was a, I was in a. You could torture me with that. I did not like it. Well, let's. You and I should do mushrooms together. Have you ever done mushrooms? Oh, no. My <laughs> ex-wife will sue me if I tell her much. I've never done anything. <laughs> no, uh, I, I've really never done DMT, though. Oh, really? Because uh, Dan, Dan wants to go down to Peru and do ayahuasca here. Um, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. get invited on a regular basis. Have you done it? Uh, no. No. Man, there really are other dimensions. And, you know, they have people that go to these events. and 50 people see the same thing. Okay, so it's it's not it's another dimension and it's aliens. Sure. And I, and I, and I knew about this when I was a kid because I heard people that were involved in government projects that were doing it. I didn't know what they were talking about when I was a kid, but my mom has had some friends that were involved in those projects, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, we're trying to map out these levels, talking to the the elves. We call them. It's kind of like the little technicians. But they're more like robots. And but then there's some really and I'm like, here's when I'm a kid, you know, on a road trip with my mom, with one of her friends, and then you know later hearing stuff about it. Um, my parents weren't involved in it, but they knew people in San Francisco working with universities and the government. And after we talked about it on Joe Rogan earlier this year, he had another professor on going, well, actually, it's about to be declassified that in Japan and England and the U.S., DMT drips are like astronauts. We're going in. We've been mapping it for decades. They've been mapping it. They're talking to the dudes. That's why the Aztecs were all doing the stuff and all of them, and they're not nice. And if you get into this, like, you know, God is not going to get involved in our free will. But there's bad stuff in the universe, and it's like chumming for sharks. That's why they do blood rituals and Satanism or in every other culture at certain sites is because it's like chumming, and you get bigger fish to come in, you know, and that's why you kill kids for the energy it releases, and these things show up. Uh, and so a lot of these DMT trips and these places you go in Peru or Costa Rica is you'll have practitioners that aren't 
the government doing their own research. Uh, and they're actually going to bring some people in and then designate somebody that's going to get attacked by these entities in this deal. And, and, and that person will never be normal again. That's why they have you sign all the waiver forms. So they're doing black magic. They're getting you in to attack certain, you know, people will see like 50 things attack one dude. And that's because you're really seeing Satanism going on and you're having, and you're seeing aliens. So you want to see aliens, go, go, go take DMT. Yeah, I'm going to. That Absolutely. was the best endorsement uh, for it I've ever heard. I, it is. I, that's I the coolest really shit I've ever heard in my well, life. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to take it because, you know. Really? Here's, here, let me. Let I'm me. not going to put myself willingly into that deal. I, need, let, I got Jesus. Let me pitch you something. <laughs> let me, let me. He's the big deep state, deep state you know, transmission. Let, I already got, I'm already covered. Let me pitch you something. See, I've got, I've got sight into all that without turning myself into that dimension. Let me pitch you something. Yep. I want to do an animated series as you as a child. Oh, it'd be so good. It's Alex Jones as a child, just going through your everyday life. Yes. And it, it would be pretty good. Then you, <laughs> look at, then you look at how you became who you are, and then everything that went on around you as a child. So, like, you saw an alien when you were eight years old, and that led you down a certain path. This would be endless story. But we don't, we don't right go now. with any of the real shit. We go with all the crazy shit you said, like, jokingly over the years. And the gay that. frogs. Yeah. The, uh, like, no, but, I mean, I... Turn it my mom's, turn it I don't talk to my mom about this. I mean, I, she literally had a friend that was a high level in one of these psychedelic research institutions at a mm -hmm. university, and it was the CIA. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it turns out my current, you know, my new wife, she was, uh, uh, I mean, these, these projects are so huge, it's not like a big deal. It's like saying, hey, I worked at Coca-Cola. Yeah. She was involved, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation deal that was funded by the CIA, and she was smoking too much weed and partying too much, so she washed out of that program. By the time they told them, hey, by the way, this is the government program, and this was virtual reality. 15 years ago, totally real doing battlefield surgeries, all this other kind of stuff. So there's a lot of a lot of programs. But I'm sitting there hearing about the clockwork elves. We think they're more like robots, and we're mapping it. And, and I'm, I was hearing classified stuff just because her friend was talking about it, you know, at the dinner table once, then on a road trip. That's real stuff. That's not a fake story. Mm -hmm. And that's why later, you know, I'm, I'm like hearing all this stuff and figuring out what it is. They're, and Joe's not a bad guy. He's, but they're through Joe and others. They recruit people. They're rolling out the psychedelic revolution. That's why big tech is saying, oh, we're about to roll out DMT ayahuasca for the general public. Mm. And then they're going to yeah. use programming <laughs> before and after to kind of let us meet our new boss. Well, that could actually work pretty well, honestly, just from what I know institutionally about ayahuasca and other drugs like that. Uh, they, they call it three years of psychotherapy in four days, basically. Unless it's being used for bad stuff. No, but you can as use a mind control therapy for bad stuff, right? No, exactly. But they're so you can, you they're mainlining MK Ultra. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you could absolutely do that if you if you could control the narrative during the trips. If you're well, on that or ceremonies, it's, whatever they it's call it. ley lines and energy lines. For whatever reason, dimensionally, they can come in. You spill blood of innocence that brings them in, uh, and so I mean, the, so the big thing is that you know they're trying to up who they're talking to, trying to get information. Which, which, which then they're able to then reconstruct here. Mm -hmm. The aliens aren't giving us the technology. In fact, these are lower level things. They know what we can build. They've already been around a bunch of places and seen stuff that we've built, other things that built that are more higher order like us. We're just at an embryonic level. So they're basically like attacking eggs on the seabed right now. And, 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 and they're a lower level creatures, but they're, you know, they're attacking us at our embryonic level mm -hmm. uh, and, and trying to like twist us and then get us to build these systems for them. Hey, Why not? Uh, Dan's, I'm still going to do it. Dan's okay. all in. I, I want to <laughs> give it a gozies, you know, just to say that I did it. Dip a toe into that water and then hop back out. Yeah. Hop what? back out. Look at look at Tim in there. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Tim, are you going to take the are you going to take the DMT with us? Is it, I, was, it, was it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? What do you say? I, yeah, there yeah. it is. I'm not taking it. There it is. Tim, you need to see the little aliens. Uh, next up, March 8th, 2014, <laughs> Malaysia Airlines flight mysteriously vanished off the radar. Uh, I wanted to ask your thoughts about this. 239 passengers and crew on A board. jihadi, Muhammad Jihad, drives it down into the water. Is that what you thought it was? Oh, yeah, all the time they do it. All. It's like oh, always flying out of Israel or flying out of Egypt, plane disappears or flying out of Indonesia, and it's like, they hear it over the radio. It's political. Um, Muhammad Jihad, Durka Durka, and then like Al Akbar. Here's what here's what I think happened. I think John DeLorean made that plane, mm -hmm. and they got it up to 88 miles per hour, and it traveled back to 1955, and now they're out of gas, and they can't get back. Ah, no, but I mean, you know a lot of these planes that are crashing are being Durka Durka Muhammad Jihad. Oh, for sure. I, is that real? Because <laughs> what two of these went missing in the the 2010s, right? Yeah. And they weren't found. Uh, allegedly, there was some wreckage that was found, yeah. you know, three years later on a beach in, like, Australia. Mm -hmm. Is that exactly what's happening? And why won't they report it and say exactly what Because they don't want you, because Islam's peaceful. 
Unless you're not a Muslim, but look, or unless you're not the right Islamic yeah, group. Yeah, you can't you can't say that there's not a concerted effort by mainstream media to to hide the fact that Islam, in a lot of ways, is very extremist. Like you can't just the thing. Kind of like cancer might be. Yeah, yeah. Like the thing with Al Baghdadi, where where was it the po Washington Post? I can't remember who it was. It was either they called him an austere religious scholar. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, technically, yes, that is true. That's not the most. That's not the biggest thing about his life. He's a guy that, OJ Simpson he's was a guy a that trained player. people yeah. how, to, how to strap suicide bombs on six-year-olds. Yeah. It's a piece of crap. Yeah. Casey Anthony was a mom for yeah. a while. <laughs> she was but a you would describe her as here. Casey Anthony, comma, mother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer was a was a chef. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he <laughs> Technically, yeah. He was eating that human veal. He always cleaned his plate. He always cleaned <laughs> his plate. Uh, 2013 was the year that uh, George Zimmerman was acquitted for second-degree murder of Trayvon Martin for Black Lives Matter. Do you think George Zimmerman lives through the 2020s? You know he's trying to sue uh, He's currently Trayvon trying Martin's to sue Trayvon Martin's for $120 million. <laughs> I don't think he makes yeah, it Yeah, I don't think he was the hill to die on with that whole deal. I think both guys were wrong. And and the, and the black witnesses, you know, you know, said that he basically attacked uh, – you know, Trayvon attacked him, but mm -hmm. the guy's an idiot. Yeah. yeah and he just keeps guy. acting. And But the Justice Department under Obama ran in, tried to stir it all up, tried to trigger a race war out of it. So just both guys were idiots. I don't think Trayvon deserved to be, you know, shot for whatever. I mean, I'm sure he got pissed off when Zimmerman comes running up to him, like, what are you doing? Yeah, mm -hmm. if some guy was following me around and I, like, and I'm just like, hey, relax, guy, I would eventually beat the shit out of him probably, right? Yeah. Any, anybody would. So I don't blame the kid at all. Like, who... I, I don't like when they say, oh, but he was smoking weed or what? He was a fucking teenager. We all do stupid shit when we're teenagers. Anyways, Zimmerman. That is weed crazy. makes you go crazy and kill people. Yeah, well. Now the DMT will, will <laughs> definitely <laughs> stop you from doing that. If That'll they had said the kid you. was actively on DMT, then that would have changed my opinion about that whole situation maybe. Well, that's why all school children need to be administered DMT before they're castrated. <laughs> yeah. Just to a get little, them used little, to little it. A little great. Yeah, elves told me so. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas at home. Merry no, Christmas at home. Here's the big secret. Silicon Valley is taking DMT and other drugs on a routine basis and believe they're talking to aliens. Oh, yeah. There's so a that's book, a fact. There's yes. a book called yes. Stealing Fire. You ever heard of it? Yeah, then they're all microdosing. It's, it's the same uh, author as a guy, I think it was called Finding Superman, Unlocking Human Potential. It's called Stealing Fire. It's actually a really good book, and it talks about- Prometheus um, type stuff. Yeah, yeah. It talks about trying to unlock human potential, and uh, so Sergey Brin and uh, what's his partner's name? Uh, from Google. The Google founders. Yeah, the Google founders took the guy they hired for CEO in, in 2000 or in 2001, whatever year it was, they took him to Burning Man for his interview. That's what they did. Like, it's all detailed, the whole thing in the and book. And they took, they took every drug at Burning Man. They took everything. From but let's just be clear. Yeah. That's just the entry level. That's not... Correct. That's like, oh, it's cool. Go go use drugs here. And then it, get, it becomes a laboratory situation later. None of those guys are running the show, okay? Yeah. I mean, they're technicians and guys that came up with a lot of it, but it's all being directed by DARPA. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling you, man, DARPA, before it was DARPA, you know, the people that own Time Life books <laughs> in the 30s were taking every hallucinogen they could. Oh, These yeah. are cults that are, like the Bible says, taking pharmacia to talk to the bad guys. Yeah, well, and that's why you read like the Graham Grimoire and all these black magic books. It's like people in castles cutting kids' heads off so that the thing pops up and tells them what to do. And they're taking stuff while they do it. If, and that's what's black, take hallucinogens, kill kids to talk to the demons. Well, look, if you're uh, if you're an employee of DARPA out there and you got some drugs you can give me, my address, give them the P.O. Box. Yeah, P.O. Box 3793, <laughs> Wilmington, North Carolina, 28406. Don't joke around that. Send it to D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. Next up, March 23rd, 2014, World Health Organization reports uh, that there's been an outbreak of Ebola, obviously in uh, Guinea. I'm kidding. Um, I just, Guiana. Guiana. Um, the start of the largest outbreak uh, of the virus in history. Is there another disease that will be out there that will be catastrophic in the 2020s? There have been all sorts of respiratory viruses. SARS. Uh, that are causing huge problems. And and now you've, you've had Ebola cases in the U.S. They cover them up. That's come out. They sent them to Atlanta. So it's okay because your not gay accent covers that. Uh, but seriously, you've got the Congo and all these huge outbreaks happening, and now they're bringing people here unvetted to the United States, just in by the thousands every week or so. We've gone and covered it in San Antonio, and there's just unvetted, untested people. So um, you're going to see more and more of these really, really nasty diseases coming out of the jungles that are going to be incubated in humans and brought into the West where we have no built-up immunity to it. That is the perfect terrorist attack, by the way. 
is to incubate a disease inside of a, a group of human beings and then try to send them to, to the United States. Well, that's what HIV was. That's why they put <clears throat> that virus in the uh, gay men, homosexual men's uh, tetanus, excuse me, uh, hep shots in like 79. And there's actually parts of where they developed it. it it's in, it's in, State in Africa? Or State Department here? memorandums. Well, well, then they, it's race specific. So uh, Northern Europeans don't have the receptor sites on their T lymphocytes. For that particular problem is viruses mutate, yeah. Mutate and, and then and then generally mutate to not, you know, they mutate from not being lethal to being lethal and leave. So they had to reintroduce HIV over and over again and tried different weapons. So it's a whole wide spectrum of a race specific weapon. And it, it, it's done a you know pretty good job with the globalists. It's probably killed what 300 million Africans. Uh, so that's why a black mm. person can look at somebody with that has HIV and get it. Yeah. But that's why people like Magic Johnson can then be given the cure because they do have cures. Most of the so-called cures, though, like the AZT and things, are just soft kills that actually kill you. Uh, but 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 most white people that are able to get it and die have already been using so many uh, dirty drugs, uh, meth and things that have Grignard reagents and heavy metals in it. That also kills your T lymphocytes. Uh, and so then viruses uh, like that are able to affect you. Gotcha. Uh, it's a race, but again, it's all run of the liberals. See? So it's okay that they're giving black people HIV and AIDS because you know it's liberal, like the Clintons and the Clinton blood scandal. For over a decade, they knowingly certified blood out of the Arkansas prisons as being tested when they knew it all had hepatitis and HIV in it. And then Bayer got it, and then Bayer admitted. You can look this up. Uh, Bayer executive said, "We don't care. Get rid of hemophiliacs." So it was actually done on purpose, not just accidentally. What about Flint? What nice people. Oh, but let's take vaccines and not question those and give them liability protection. Yeah, and what about Flint then? Because this was another top story in 2014 with the, with the water crisis. Is this something our government's doing or is this genuinely on accident? Um, I mean, it's incompetence for sure. But you never know if it's some kind of weird test the government's doing. Look, we, we a lot of people are incredulous about the things you say. I am often. And people are incredulous about conspiracies or whatever in general. But MKUltra is real. This Epstein thing, that's real. These mm -hmm. things happen. When people get powerful and isolated and away from everybody else, they will do fucked up shit. So I, it would not be surprising me at all that there's some organization that's conducting sure. experiments but, but, on but people. All over the world, people build platforms. They build generally pyramids. You guys can do an over-the-head shot. It'd be good. And so let's say here's the third dimension that's right between the lower and upper di dimensions. And whatever it is, why are humans here on the third dimension, continually building platforms, pyramids, and then butchering humans, believing they're then making contact with entities that in every culture look the same and act the same, mm. um, and are then getting knowledge about how to build a civilization, but only to oppress people and entities in the third dimension. Because this continues to happen. So you got things coming up that want to do really bad things. Yep. Wait, what's coming up exactly? Well, I mean, it's coming up into our dimension. From the second dimension. So that piece of paper, like a flat thing, is coming up into the third dimension. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, it's above and below. So you're getting into all the dimensions, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You could say <clears throat> two dimensions like this piece of paper, and then what's the one dimension, then what's the third dimension, then what's the mm -hmm. fourth dimension, and then you're sleeping and thinking about quantum mechanics, it'd be a fourth, fifth, sixth dimension. I'm just simply giving this <laughs> a simple model from wherever every ancient culture believed in, 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 and they were using a simple two-dimensional view mm -hmm. that things coming below, or let's just say lower energy resonation, you know, bad, bad things, they saw it as from below, and then there were better things coming down, but they wouldn't usually get involved in our affairs or take away our free will. These things would trick us, you know, whether it's genies, demons, whatever you call it in the culture, and there were always priesthoods set up to do horrible things, and these lower creatures demand blood to the priesthood. And then why is the priesthood giving them blood? Because they're getting knowledge about mathematics, the stars, uh, you know, technologies, warfare, implements, things that they want. So in every culture, every culture would end up with a priesthood sacrificing children for entities to give them knowledge. That, that's in the hieroglyphs. It's in the Sanskrit, you know, it's ancient Africa, ancient Mesoamerica, ancient Europe, uh, the Druids. Everyone sacrificed children, particularly mm -hmm. virgins. Yep and tortured them to death to please these things that would appear and give them power at certain, now they've uh, magnetic rock uplifts going down into the center of the earth. So somehow these things are coming through these dimensional wavelengths in the planet and humans everywhere are getting organized around worshiping these entities that want to see children chopped up. 
So you're telling me you've not done DMT? No. <laughs> don't believe you. I don't either. <laughs> Going down that rabbit hole with you, I was in the fourth you dimension. You might be on DMT right now. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it, man. I <laughs> No, but I mean, you understand from a sociological, anthropological, archaeological perspective, this is all historical fact. Why does every culture end up being run by a priest class that builds pyramid platforms and sacrifices children to entities for power? Uh, because people are stupid and easily controlled. But these people weren't, I mean, maybe they were talking. Maybe the ancient Egyptians were talking to people at the same time mm -hmm. in the Americas and saying, this is how you do it. Well, it wasn't just them. I mean, the, uh, in Mexico City, there were 86,000 people sacrificed in one day. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it's... So that the well, winged serpent okay, they, they would, so the winged well. serpent yeah, would yeah. give them more knowledge. Yeah. And so the universe wouldn't mm -hmm. end. These entities are saying the universe ends if you don't kill more people. Why, and now we're why told is that, the though? planet's going to die if we don't wipe everybody out. Why, why is that, you think? What's your honest well, guess? Well, the, 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 I mean, look at this article. Globalist using environmentalism to push eugenics, population control, and they're, they're organizing it around occultism. This is an excellent article by Brandon Smith at Alt Market that, that, that breaks it all down with historical links. It's not that long an article, but you'll learn a lot reading this. By the way, the Earth is not overpopulated. Every single human being That's that exists true. could stand up in Miami at the same time. Absolutely. We've got one city. We've got some not toxic just. industries and things that could be done better, but absolutely, humans generally improve land they're on. Yeah. Like, if we're not breathing out carbon dioxide, this becomes a too oxygen-rich environment, and plants can't exist anymore. It's a symbiotic relationship. That's nonsense. That this exactly. And if you have the carbon cycle, sunlight, water, yeah. carbon dioxide, oxygen— they're targeting the one thing we don't have enough of, and that's carbon dioxide that's a trace gas. If you were aliens that wanted to kill the planet, you'd target that. Yeah, or... They're, they're, they're trying to reduce the one thing that compared to the more ancient... From the, from the uh, mud samples and from the ice samples, carbon dioxide used to be hundreds of times higher. That's why plants grew faster, were healthier. That's why the Sahara was green. It wasn't that it quit raining there. It was that... Uh, there was less carbon dioxide, so the plants grow longer, need less water with more carbon dioxide. I want to circle back to this pyramid thing one, one last time. Um, smart guy over here. Yes, very, very smart. Uh, he's the smartest on our show. <laughs> the smartest on the show we call Drinking Bros. Back to the pyramid thing real quick. Is the, What's the significance behind the pyramid, and do you believe in a simulated world? Is this a sim world? Let's go back to this. So the apex or the center of higher dimensions and lower dimensions coming together is a pyramid from the top. So you're seeing it from the top of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the uh, capstones here. And so that's the intersection of the priesthood in the universe at that point. And the, 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 you know, the discovery of the fact that this, the third dimension is a major launch point into all the other dimensions. And there's actually the planet is like a giant airport. So is this a simulated world? Do you believe we're living in a sim world? It's a third-dimensional genetic program that is not a simulation. The simulation is real. You could call it a simulation, but it, because it's artificially, the dark matter has proven this and all the um, physics have proven that there's a force many times stronger than ours holding the universe in place. Yeah, it's dark energy, basically. Yep, dark matter. Yeah, dark energy, dark matter. And, and really what that is is the higher and lower dimensions. And now they have the fifth element, uh, which they you know, physicists have come out with, that is all that other energy and other dimensions that bleed in. They've done that a long time. There was a physicist, I forget who, like in the 20s said, if we could fly a probe over um, Saturn, that he believed its mass as a gas giant would be enough to manifest a uh, hexagon in the... Uh, Ice caps. It does have more, you know, more frozen. It's not completely solid. Uh, you know, gas at the top, so it's a gas giant, but but, but it has an ice form. And then and then when um, was it Voyager or whichever one flew over it, there 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 was the hexagon. Okay. Which was an interdimensional manifestation, um, at that at that giant of a level. Other dimensions then manifest by gravitational bleed. You know, the good thing about this conversation is when I do take DMT, I'm just going to play this episode back. Yeah, and time. that's going to be my way into that world. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, be priests eventually or whatever the fuck. <laughs> exactly. Not, hey, if, if, it, if the organization exists like this, we may as well take it over and make it better. Yeah, why not? Why well, not? that's what they're worried about. They should be worried because I'll fuck these people up. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll take way more DMT than they're prepared for. <laughs> They'll say, "Oh yeah, how, how many, how many, how many people's potentials are you going to rob and steal to up your power in their world?" Though? There's always an, a, there's always a secondary power source. Exactly. There's you don't one. need the energy of children, and you don't no. want it. I'll get it somewhere else. Yeah. Well, you'll get it. You got to ask for it from the guys up top. Uh, Who are the guys up top? What's God? Okay. But you got to, you know, they got, you got God's just not going to give that power to anybody. Man or woman. Well, I mean, there's a the male. I mean, I'm gonna, it's beyond all that. But I mean, you, you, I mean, the male energy is creating and building, and I mean, I, I and then uh, again, kind of like, kind of like the universe is the woman, and God made it. Okay. Which, which again, you get back. Well, that woman made. No, it's a man's impetus. I mean, if you had to describe it, male and female. Sure. Creation is God creating a woman. That's why we're we're you know God's the groom, we're the bride. So we're all come, is what you're saying. Well, yeah. what it is is like Adam, Eve is made from a rib. From man. I heard that Adam took that rib out so he could suck his own dick. Yes or no? Yes. And I heard uh, that uh, Chili's also used that rib and made it into a baby back, baby back, baby Ooh. back. I yes. want that two for 22 deal. Let's go to Chili's. Yes. Oh, that's Applebee's. Excuse me. Threw Sorry. that back to the 2010s. <laughs> We're almost done, Zach Voorhees. The we good are. whistleblower. You hang on. We should get him in here. He's the tape of special. <laughs> Have you taken the DMT? Come on in. We'll give you some DMT. Zach Voorhees figure out, took figure the, out DMT. Hour of the, show. the DMT. I got to say, this is an amazing studio. Uh, here on planet Guabble Slop. That's it's it's unbelievable. And it's weird that the name of the planet keeps changing too. It's over and over and over what's again. What's going on? It's interdimensional. Can we see that? Come up and again? get them on. Come on in. Come sit on my lap. Come on. It's Come on. Christmas. We're not gay. Oh, hilarious. Oh, sit on my it's lap right Christmas. here. Christmas. You guys. This will so get a lot nice. of views right here. There look, you go. Look that at makes this. The women happy. Look at this. This part uh, makes them. You're happy not allowed. Too. The girls come sit on my lap. The girls. Okay. This is kind of weird. Take over for five minutes. Yeah. All right. Wow. Come on in. Chair. Don't try to rape me. What's your name? I'm Zach. What's your last name, Zach? Uh, Voorhees. A Lego maniac. Like I'm a Jason. Lego maniac. Are you really? Yeah, and I also walked 950 pages of Google censorship regime. Infowarsstore.com. To the DOJ. Available. Infowarsstore.com. Yeah, yeah look, look at, at that. This. <laughs> at Jeffrey Epstein didn't hang himself. It's no. available. It's, it's available. available. <laughs> you know, he's, you can also have it as a cake. <laughs> and off he goes. He's he's Superman. He hasn't ripped his shirt off that. yet, so. I don't know what to tell you. Wow. So you uh, got a show? So you're going to record a special I, I, here? I'm actually going to record a special here after this. We're going to be talking about vaccines and what's been happening. Back. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know what? I wish that I had eyes like that. Like when that Laser cool, eyes. You got to do a lot of DMT to get that. You got to do right? a lot of DMT. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you guys talking about on your it. show? We're talking about vaccines. We're talking about what's been happening in Samoa and the dystopian nightmare that's been happening in that country as... They've received money for a vac for a measles outbreak. Okay. The measles epidemic I'm happened. Test, I'll be right back. Yeah. And then as a result, they're <coughs> like, oh, now we've got to like vaccinate everyone because there's an outbreak. So the military is going like door to door. And if you can't prove that you've been vaccinated, then they, they vaccinate you. And uh, as a result, there's a lot of kids that are getting measles now um, because they're giving you a live virus. And it's really funny that one of the side effects of the measles virus is measles. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like a flu vaccine. It's the same thing. No. Yeah. I, I have children and you know, look, look that, that happens. Are, are you they an, fully are, vaccinated? They are. Are you, are you an anti-vaxxer in, in the United States? Um, I am kind of an anti-vaxxer. I mean, I hate the word anti-vaxxer cause that's like, oh, you're against vaccines. It's like, no, we're, I'm more like pro safe vaccines. Mm. And the problem is, is that some of those vaccines have some nasty stuff in them. They had uh, thimerosal. Uh, so, for example, there's a bunch of vaccines that have aluminum adjuvant that they add. Yeah, but and so does deodorant that goes under your arm. Yeah, you should, and I don't wear uh, aluminum containing deodorant. Right? Where do you find non aluminum containing uh, deodorant? Oh, it's That's all over the place. Whole Foods? Actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can, you can find it. Yeah, yeah it's there's, all over the place. There. Look, you got to be rich to, to get rid of aluminum all the, all, all the way around, though, right? I mean, because most of that shit's expensive. How much is your deodorant? I, I honestly don't even use deodorant. I know that sounds like, oh, you're supposed to stink. No, I don't eat sugar. And as a result, I no longer need to wear deodorant. It's kind of weird. Okay. So if you don't eat sugar, you don't need deodorant? That's right. Wow. I'm gonna, we're going to test this theory. Test it out. Yeah, test it out. I will. Completely abstain from sugar and see what happens to your body odor. It's, it's amazing. And it'll, it'll be gone. It's gone because the thing is, is that you leak a bunch of stuff out through your skin. Your skin is a detoxifying agent. And when you get all the sugar in your body, you generate a bunch of toxins and then they push out to your skin. Bacteria start to eat up on those metabolites. So gotcha. You don't eat the sugar. You go to keto. 
you just don't have the same issues as you do. Before. Except for heart disease and obviously. keto crotch. No, no, no. That's that's the heart disease is caused by sugar. The whole like thing where they said, "Oh, you got to stay away from fat." No, f- they that's stupid. That yeah, back. that's that's so yeah. stupid. That's 1950s bullshit. You should be eating yeah. as much fat as possible. <clears throat> oh, I don't know about all that, but you should definitely be eating fat as 30 to 40 percent of your. Well, there is good sure. fats and bad fats. 30 obviously. to 40 percent ish, I believe, of your diet. I mean, you can do 100 percent of your calories from fat, and like like just enough protein to maintain. Well, you could do anything technically. Yeah. Well, no. If you do sugar, you're going to die really quickly. You're going to get diabetes, and you're going to get hunger problems. Eh, and then it takes 45, 50 years. Yeah. That's longer than they lived back in the day. Exactly. Well, I, the fat boys are still alive. Biblically, they said, they said <laughs> it's really interesting. There's this, like, <clears throat> biblical thing that says that you live, that we're designed to live 120 years, and now there's this guy by the name of David Sinclair at Harvard. Mm-hmm. He's been studying mm-hmm. res- resveratrol and NAD+. Plus. He says that the... Uh, that he wants to get people to live to their fullest potential, which is 120 years, which exactly matches up with the Bible. Okay. By the way, that's in DNA Force Plus. There you go. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? It's sold out right now. It's sold out right now <laughs> because it's so popular. So, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things that the. the... I need to take you guys' studio over here in Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just walking around the room. <laughs> We call that a callback joke in the yeah. biz. Um, so speaking of which, since you're on, we're in the middle of a recap show and prediction show uh, for the 2010s into the 2020s. One of the top stories, and again, this is completely at random, uh, June 26, 2015, Supreme Court issues a 5-4 ruling that gay marriage is legal, legalizing same-sex unions nationwide. Why do you think it took them that long to pass this? To legalize same-sex marriage. marriage. Yeah. yeah, like why would the government be involved in it in the first place is what I would ask. Yeah, it's it seems strange. And then, you know, you're into, at this point, uh, seven years in the Obama administration. Yeah. Why did it take so long when it seems like Democrats, I mean, in, in today's world, are always fighting for gay rights and they, they or they claim to be. Yeah, least. and then they get in there and then they don't really, like, complete the deal. Yeah. Like, yeah. They don't, like, push it all the way Well, that's what the Affordable it. Care Act was. Why It was just a handout to the insurance companies. That's all it was. Sorry. Yeah, it yeah. was. Like, yeah. honestly, it was bullshit. That whole fucking thing that and Democrats championed was nonsense. There was, there was, like, a communist manifesto that says to take control of a country, you need to... Get control of the health care. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting because it's like the left is obsessed with, you know, taking over health care. And then, you know, I get into all this health stuff and I realize, wait a minute, most of these diseases are actually caused as side effects of the pharmaceutical industry, mm. the vaccines, and the unhealthy food that we eat, and also the toxins that are in our environment. Our diet is pretty bad. Iodine? No, our diet. Our diet, yeah. As a country, is pretty fucking bad. Yeah. But what are you going to do? I mean, I'm going to McDonald's right after. What are you going to do? I don't know. You could Pronto. try some of uh, Infowars, um, you know, supplements. Because I take all of it. I eat whatever I want, and I just take everything on the table. That, yeah. There you go. And we have we have uh, amazing sponsors. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> best mattresses in the biz. 25% off everything in the entire store right now. Uh, mattresses, sheets, pillows, Covers, adjustable bases, you name it. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. It's got 25% off all the way to January 6th. They said, fuck Christmas. We're going all the way through the 6th. Thank you for being here. Tell everyone where they could they could find you. You guys can find me on uh Twitter.com slash perpetual maniac. I am the Google that whistleblower. Is so comfortable that bed. I just went and slept in it. Really? Yes. Yeah. All right. He loves Alex Jones loves a ghost. Alex, you're, about to, you're about to type a really important program here at their I am. Yes. studios. High yeah. five. It. Al- Alex High five Jones it. only sleeps 25 seconds at a time. Yeah, I know. That I know. Exactly. He just took his nap yep. for the day. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to these questions because I've taken enough of these men's time. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I love the Drinking Bros show. Absolutely. Drink a big old bottle of DMT. <laughs> <laughs> October two, 2017, everybody uh, got cold into the Me Too movement. Was that good or bad for society? And does this continue into the 2020s well you just hit it there on the head as they say why are they doing the whole gay marriage thing it's not about gay people being able to get into a relationship and ripped off by lawyers where they charge you know gay couples th- three times more money uh you know for them to get a divorce that's that's really what that's about at the lawyer level a huge scam but it's 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 it's, it's really about getting rid of the family it's about targeting children it's about destroying all norms and and softening up civilization to be able to take us over and it's the same thing with the next point. With Me Too? Me Too is about saying men are attacking women 
and the West is evil and we treat women bad, but Islam's great and we need it to come over here because it knows how to you know, treat women and children and everybody else. So it's another form of, of division. Uh, it's a way to get the sexes fighting with each other. It is a divide and conquer strategy. And it's really to do what's happened in Japan where most men are scared to get a relationship because the women just they're want their money. They're having a huge problem over there actually right now. Like there's, there's like uh, the average age that somebody loses their virginity is like 24 years old or something like that now. It's, some, it's weird. They've yeah. got like 1.2... So if you got 2.2 is what you need to keep the species going. Yeah, yeah. They're like 1.2. Yeah, they're uh, birth Italy's at like 1.3. Birth rate, yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, well, don't worry. We'll replace your, you know, civilization with North Africans who never get a job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, uh, October Italy. 2nd. Um, no, I'm sorry about that. Uh, this was September 27th, 2016. Uh, more than 20 million people tuned in to watch the confirmation hearing of Supreme Court Justice uh, nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Um do you think RBG makes it out of the year 2020? And No. If I had to bet on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the Crypt Keeper's grandmother, uh, I think that she will make the jump into hyperspace <laughs> uh, by the sixth month of 2020. Okay, great. So in that sixth month, do you get into an Obama-type sitch where, uh, like, you know, was it Garlic Mar Marlon Garrick or Merrick Garland? There we go. Yeah. That's the weirdest fucking name it's of all time. It's the worst name ever. Yeah, ever. Uh, are we in that situation where people try to hold up? They that can't seat hold then? up for four years. No, but in, if if she dies in six months, like you said, oh yeah, they're absolutely gonna fucking. Uh, Do you think they'll yeah. they'll hold up that absolutely, seat? Absolutely, yes. Yes, I, I think they're gonna contest uh, allowing uh, the confirmation of the new person unless they nominate hillary clinton yeah i'm not i'm not necessarily against that like in the same way that in trying to impeach some guy in the in the last year of a presidency leading into a new presidential election is basically a political coup d'etat i think that trying for for a sitting a, 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 what, what could potentially be a lame duck government nominating a new supreme court justice i think it's kind of the same like i don't mind waiting i think trump's gonna win anyways but it, i mean it is his power to do that for sure and I, and I think yeah. the mandate is to not let the left run everything so i think trump has to uh you know if he needs to help her you know, sitting in the delta force it's, you know it's, well, that's a joke it's a joke <laughs> I, I want her to live a million years ruth Bader ginsburg i predict she's gonna live to the year 2090 billion uh dar darker follow-up here do you think the democrats actually if if things get desperate enough do you think she gets clinton side right around mm, october <laughs> So that way, they've at least got one more thing to say. Hey, man, you've got Ooh, to go out. You ought, and don't vote. Like you, don't give them ideas. That is diabolical. That'll make the left really riot and freak out, and really show up at the polls and have a way to hold it up for sure. Uh, yeah, no, because I, I, wouldn't that be? You know, I'm going to revise it. I think it's the October surprise. I think the deep state caps Ruth Bader Ginsburg if she can hold on on October 37th, which I know doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't. It didn't work with uh, Scalia though. No, it didn't actually. Yeah, like October thirty seventh is election day. Yeah, yeah, October thirty seventh. We're three hundred three hundred twenty one. Three twenty one. Yeah. I like how you have that up inside your studio. Last but not least, my studio. Yeah, the planet Gorbslop studio. Their studio. <laughs> What's the name of the planet? Uh, Gorbslop. Gorbenslop. Yeah. Gor Gorbenslop. Gorbenslop. Yeah. Re you can rewind this shit and find out for yourself. That's the secret parent company. Of Google, it is. It is, yeah. And they 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 operate from their own planet. They got this uh, neck beard supreme leader. It's Google well, is short for that. Google what do you think of this Gordon Bowie knife? There exclusively available. Yeah, at what's, Are you is that are you selling uh, Bowie knives? This now? is a fine camel bone made, Bowie knife made out of real camel. Yeah, which it, bone in the camel? It just says camel bone. Femur. <laughs> now, wait, now, 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 this made with real camel Rambo femurs. Deluxe. Only 200 of these left. Act now. These are at incredible value. Makes a perfect gift for the family here. That's a nice knife, by the way. Yeah. Really nice uh, knife. We sell a lot of stuff at InfoWarsTore.com to fund ourselves. I just had somebody say, hey, I bought one of those buck knives. It's really nice. So I discovered today that we were selling these. So that's why I'm plugging. And, and seriously, used to, I didn't plug when I could. Yeah. You have a great audience. And I, I've actually watched a lot of you guys' stuff. Uh, and they love you. You know that, right? I've loved you since you were on Nickelodeon. Oh, <laughs> oh. stop right there. <laughs> Blushing. <laughs> anyway, seriously, though. Blushing. Hey, I think my gang needs to join your gang, as they say in Time Bandits. But people have to go to <laughs> band.video at infowars.com forward slash show to find my evil verboten transmission. And it really is an act of rebellion to tell folks about my show. And you guys have been persecuted as well. So just remember, 
We don't wake folks up in a vacuum. This is comedy is a good way to do it. Yes. I'm glad we're having some fun today. I hope mm -hmm. folks will spread the word about the Drinking Bros and subscribe to your podcast, everything else, because uh, they're trying to extinguish all of us off the air and kill these platforms because they're popular. So remember, the popular part means you can trump their censorship and their AI blocking systems with your word of mouth. That is king. Kona. Absolutely. Uh, last question to get you out of here, Alex. Oh, I don't want to get out of here. No, no, no. Because I, I look, you're a busy man. You got like nine. We shows just got another. On. I'll keep going. Nine I'm, shows going on. Uh, Zach Voorhees. You know, we may be getting married. I'm joking. But 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 seriously, he, he can wait a few minutes. Go ahead. Hungry bottom. He's a hungry bottom. I think. Uh, 2020. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. We learned a lot today is what we did. We learned about Hungry Bottoms earlier. Milo taught us about that, actually. He did. He did. Uh, last question. Trump in 2020, who does he run against, and does he win? Who is the final candidate from, that makes it in from the Democratic side? Do you think Hillary squeezes in there at the nth hour? Well, as you know, a lot of people out there watching, I've been saying Hillary's going to run in 2020 since she lost three years ago. And... That's because she never gives up. She thinks the third time's the charm. And she needs to act like she's running at least to, to, to kind of keep getting the campaign money. She's been campaigning. She's been everywhere. She's a candidate other than announcing. And now they have the polls out that, oh, she's the front runner. Now, she's already missed the deadlines of what she takes to file. But she wants a broker convention mm -hmm. where she comes in as the queen and saves the day. Or she's going to then endorse who she wants and put them in and they'll be her minion. But she has every intention uh, you know, if she can just hold on like a Skeksy from the Dark Crystal to power, uh, to <laughs> staying in, uh, you know, you know, staying in the power structure and trying to run against Trump, uh, and so I think Hillary is the front runner. I don't think Biden can hold on because the dementia uh, is uh, getting so intense and so fast. Outside of that, I don't think it's Bernie. Uh, Elizabeth Warren's falling short. I mean, I think no matter what they do, unless they assassinate Trump. Uh, or Trump has a stroke or something, that they've you know, poisoned him or something, uh, that uh, Trump is a shoe-in uh, at this point because of the impeachment and the Kavanaugh and the Russiagate. I mean, he could be found, you know, dead in bed like a Hollywood celebrity with a boy or something, uh, and uh, he wouldn't get in trouble because they have so discredited themselves. So this is an amazing point where the elites are so inbred, so mentally, you know, dumb that they just can't help destroy themselves. Great. Uh, By the way, that's the point he was – when he said he could murder somebody on the street and still get elected, what he was saying – he was commenting on fake news. He wasn't commenting on – He wasn't saying, I want to kill people, yeah. and, I can, and I can do it. I'm a dictator. He's saying, they have discredited themselves so much, I yeah. could kill somebody. Yeah. Just like he, he, he was saying, man, I've been rich a long time and everything, you know, and been a billionaire. But he's telling the, you know, the guy on NBC, he said, man, you're secretly recording him, as everybody knows. These women are wild. You can just, they throw themselves at you. You just grab them. That's like women throwing their panties at Elvis. What he's saying is when a woman jumps on you with her legs around you and says, F me, you know, it's just yeah. boom. I mean, that's what passion is. And he's saying, now that I'm this big celebrity on TV, my God, they're coming at you. They're, they're pulling their clothes off. You can grab them right by the... That's not like hiding in the, in the woods and a girl jogs by and you grab her. Mm -hmm. He's saying they're throwing themselves at you. Right. And, and any guy that's had women throw themselves at them, not that I ever have, Knows that you know, when a woman wants it, they want it, you know? Yeah, you know what you can find in the wood is uh, possums, by the way. And that's yeah. where you'll find sink of the young turds. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking for possums. They're out there, folks. Don't give up. Uh, at the end of our show, we always do the drinking bro of the week. Uh, we're going to give it to you, uh, Alex Jones. Do you have alcohol here? Uh, we do. We always have alcohol. You want me to have the first drink in 100 and like, I, I quit drinking August 23rd. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. I was never a big drinker before. No, we I, do. We have it on 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 no, our person. Good. See, we don't have it. So no, no, no DMT either. No, no DMT. You're we free to use any means yeah. necessary. We already but gave I you. want them alive. We, no uh, disintegration. We already gave you the DMT. It was about thirty seconds before you started drying this crazy ass map right here. So. Tonight we will we will have uh, uh, drinks with you if, yeah, if you're do down. Uh, we we would love to. We would love to. No, but we want to give you the drinking bro of the decade. Uh, we've done almost six hundred shows at this point. Uh, you were our favorite guest. Uh, wow. We are we are That's honored that you would come back and do the show. Anytime. I could listen to you read the fucking phone book for, for four hours. Really? Yes. Oh, um, I can't. Jeez. You know there's too many people named Smith, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> John, Daniel Smith. Uh, we we got to get rid of the Smiths. It's, it's a conspiracy. Uh, either way. The government nice. is one the of the government most entertaining men on the planet. And, uh, well, I like you guys in the comedy you do, but you guys got a bunch of podcasts, too. We do. Yeah. yeah. 
We do. Uh, Ross Patch and Revolution, we're adding a third in 2020 for the media company. Yep. So uh, we're excited. Well, I love you guys. That. So please come back anytime. Use the studios anytime you're in. You're in uh, I know you guys shoot all your stuff in Texas, and then where else it was? Texas and Wilmington. Yeah. Wilmington, and North Carolina. Planet, Lord, See, I love how it's flyover country. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is like so. It, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't want to be in L.A. I don't want to be in New York. No. No. I, we were. And then we, we moved out, like, deliberately. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are, by the way. Watching, you were talking about watching the collapse of, of, California, yeah. of California is like like watching those it's reality television, fat housewife shows. Yeah. But what's going to happen to it? It's, I mean, I've, I've been there, you know, I mean, I go there to do shows and stuff, and even the nicer areas are falling apart. I don't know. It's going to turn into like the goddamn Thunderdome, I guess. Eventually. Yeah. This is going to be Mel Gibson driving around in a fucking RV. And if the fucking big one does up. happen, if the big earthquake does happen, oh, I mean, fucked. they are fucked. Yeah. They are they're, fucked. They're, they're, Remember in 89, that was yeah. that was bad. Imagine if that happened in Los Angeles today. Yeah. They are absolutely any, fucked. Any, anything that would interrupt the uh, pipeline of energy and water down into Southern California, that, that there would be 20 million people dead. Like it'd be, well, what they're going to do is they're going to turn like locust and exit, and we're all going to have to are. come save them. They're they in are, Dallas yeah. and Austin and Nashville now. That's where they are all leaving. I, I, I mean, what about that? And then we'll end this. You guys got to go. You're, you're just being nice. You're the ones making me stop. But... I mean, people ask, why do I live in Austin? Well, my family's from here, and my, my family did you know, help us found the state on both sides. And, I mean, but it's bad. I don't like L.A., and I don't like most of Austin now. The, it, it, it's because it's not the Californians are bad. It's the locusts that went to California in the last 50 years that had their kids. They're just the scum of the earth, and then now they come here, and they literally are trying to dominate and control everybody. And so, I, and Dallas is blue now. San Antonio's turning blue, Houston's blue, mm -hmm. Austin's blue, and... The whole state of Texas was almost blue to... to Beto. Beto. Yeah. And then notice he was a flash in the pan, but it's still, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It so is. so where do we have our last stand as Americans? I mean, Probably the Alamo, you'd think. <laughs> but I mean, what states you do you think? Nailed it. The problem is, wherever conservatives and nationalists and patriots are just old-fashioned American, you guys are all sorts of funny jokes. We're not like super right-wing Puritans here. Wherever we go, they're going to follow like locusts. Yeah. yeah. So how do you how do you move somewhere and not have them come and demand you know that they have access to your children's genitals? Boy, uh, that's tough. First of all, you got to get something to cover your children's genitals, and I recommend that to everyone yeah. out there. Uh, secondly, pups, yeah. you know, I, I think people just keep picking different cities. Los Angeles was one, right? Earlier on, back in the '40s, '50s, it was New York. You know, everybody was in New York City. We got to go to New York City. And then it was Los Angeles. Now people are exiting Los Angeles, going to Austin, Texas, going to Nashville. I think it's inevitable. Um, and I think there is a point that obviously the white man goes down and it'll be taken over by other people. And that's it. We had a nice run and congratulations. Yeah. Uh, but as far as stopping it or, or, or what you can do, you can't. No, it's kind you, of a, you gotta try to, to, to learn to get along with everyone the best you can. Yeah. Have open dialogue, talk to people. Well, I want to be clear, I, it's I not the brown podcasts. people I have issues with. No, it's no, the no, no, weird, crazy zombie white people yeah. trying yes. to hey, we control you or do what you say. Uh, yeah. We need to talk to your children and let run them. Uh, 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 and there's like, you know, you're, oh my God, look at this big truck. Oh my God, he's he's wearing a Trump shirt. Oh my and then when they fuck F you, Alex Jones, fuck you, fuck you, you're Russian, fuck you. And you start going, fuck you back, and they go, Jesus, leave me alone. Yeah. Man, you're throwing them. I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker. Yeah. You're fucking, oh, you, you don't like my kids either, do you? And I'm like, you've already brain damaged them with vaccines. Just get out of my way. <laughs> and they're literally, there's videos of this where they'll walk over to my table and go, fuck you, fuck your family. So I'll get up and I'll go, fuck your family. And I'll, I'll follow them over. They start going, yeah, leave me alone. They always, and then they always like tell Reddit, Jones attacked us. And they edit the tape after they've yelled at me. It's also the deception of left. It's like, as a hive, they now all run the same scams as, like, Nancy Pelosi down. Like, they'll stage stuff and set you up. Like, when I go out to these Trump rallies and there's leftists there, they'll come up, like, on a wheelchair and punch you in the back or pinch you and hope you hit them mm -hmm. or, like, have their kid there or Antifa when they're blocking entrances to set, like, a Trump event or, like, to his inauguration. They'll have little women up front, and they're hitting you when you come up hoping you do something. Yeah. I mean, they have no honor. They use all of our chivalry against us. Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, by the way, I, I caught this is totally off subject, but I caught that Ti podcast you were on. Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. Um, and I, I heard his comments, you know, a few months later about his daughter and the hymen, and he, you know, goes in with the, the gynecologist and all that stuff. Uh, what were your thoughts on that interview? You know, he knew the truth about things, but 
to politically correct, cover himself. He just had to keep going racism, racism, racism. There's an epidemic of black people being beaten and attacked by white people. And I'm like, dude, that's crime statistics. That's not what's going on. And uh, No, crime happens between the same race 90% of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we kill each other. Black on black, Almost yes. Almost always. Yes. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there, and then I couldn't tell he was serious. He's like, you know, this big hamburger chain selling, you know, people in the hamburgers. And I'm just like, I mean, I, I, I mean, he was. Did he uh, say which one? Because I'm getting a little hunger for that human view. I was, <laughs> I was being, I was trying to have empathy and 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 have a connection to the guy. And he did drink like a bottle and a half of tequila in front of me. Well, oh, really? That's good. Yeah, yeah. And he was taking breaks every 15 minutes or so. Oof. And uh, I'm not that, sure what was going on. But, strange uh, show. It looked like you got pinned in and the editing was weird. Uh, yeah. Well, I watched we, it because we had chatted about it off air. It's the last episode. It was all meant to make me look stupid. And and like, you, uh, you didn't? Uh, I, it, just, it was just a strange hack job of whatever. It seemed like they had a narrative and, you know, whatever yeah, no, they taped means for, necessary. They, they taped for five it. hours. Holy shit. Jesus I never Christ. watched it. How long was it? I don't know. I, I, I caught, I think it was 40 minutes, 50 minutes. So, mm. um, and it was really segmented the way it was yeah. broken up and then chopped up into clips later on holy mackerel well you know what i taped the whole son of a bitch so i'll just put the whole thing out oh we really got it. We, yeah, we taped the whole thing i i would I because i think people probably got the wrong impression about you yeah um after it aired so i'm just giving like you like like, like on it. what did they do what was they, they went to his questions more and there was a lot of cutaways of you where it was just kind of like you looking dumb or it was just like you were you know nodding your it's head b-roll of you not Responding to things, probably. Correct. And having known you, like... Wait, so they just did what Katie Couric got caught doing with the gun people? Yeah. Correct. Wow. That's what it seemed like to me. Yeah, you know, I, I just thought I'd go in there and be nice. And I wonder why they kept going. It was about an hour, and it was like, we're going to do another hour, we're doing another hour. And, wow, I didn't know that. I'll have to look into that. We, we, they Yeah, put the whole thing out. They said, oh, yeah, you can tape the whole thing. So we tape it on one camera. And then later they go, hey, we really don't want you to put that out. And we're like, well, we don't have a contract with you. But I said, well, well we want the publicity. And I said, sure, uh, yeah, okay, well, I'll wait and see what you put out. And I, I, I never looked back, but I actually saw people like comments going, yeah, you know, Alex did okay, but I thought he'd be more talkative to this and that. Or you didn't say two words in that whole fucking interview. So I'd, I'd check it out if I were you. Yeah. Uh, I, that's why I wanted to get your, your thoughts on it. Because uh, literally, I think the last time we were here, you had just wrapped that interview, or, or and, and you were like, yeah, man, I just sat down with T.I., and I was like, huh? And I was like, how did that go? And you were like, ah, I, I thought it went pretty well, and it was a pretty nice guy, whatever, and you said it was very long. The, the segment I saw I barely had two words of it <coughs> in there of you, and uh, well, short. Well, I'll have to set the record straight because of the deceptive editing, and I, I wanted to be friendly with that guy, but uh, we'll just put it all out unedited. Yeah, and he's got his own fucking problems going on right now. So uh, Ti's going through it as we speak. Well, I don't, I don't wish anything against the no, guy. No, uh, because of what he said about about uh, his daughter uh, having sex. Um, he wanted to make sure that they were still virgins. Therefore, he went into the gynecologist and made sure their hymens were still intact. Well, he told me that in the, in the green room. That's wild as fuck. But you can get so that's your, real. You're, he he said that to me. I think he either said it on the thing or uh, yeah, he said it on on another podcast. Yeah. Well, then, I've never, I didn't even hear that in the news. I remember thinking it yeah. was a joke. I, I, it, it, he was saying, I don't segment. want my daughters getting near anybody's uh, uh, dick. And uh, that's why I take them to the doctor and get their get their stuff checked. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a, a mass, massive news story. And, um, you know, he's been under a lot of heat for it ever since. But after that, that's when I looked up your interview and I was like, shit, well, how, if that was wild on that chick's podcast, how wild was the interview with Alex well, Jones? Yeah. And there was barely any. <laughs> Any rebuttal yeah, from you on that like show? Three weeks to put anything out. Wow, I'm gonna investigate that because that's really important. Yeah, check it well, out. Well, I want to invite you guys back on my show. Yes, yeah. and uh, appreciate you. Yes, sir. Hey, Alex Jones. Thank you, sir. Band you dot video. Band dot video. Yes. The only place you're gonna find it. Uh, for Anthony and Anthony Holloway, Alex Jones, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.